When I die, I want you to promise me that you're not going to bury me in a pet cemetery. Because I don't want to live this life again. Because, and here's where it gets interesting, mm -hmm. I kind of don't ever want to see the movie again. Oh. But anyway, welcome to episode 5 of Stephen King's Hit or Shit, or Two Fat Fucks Aside, if a Stephen King adaptation is a hit or a complete miss, uh -huh. a.k.a. shit. Yes. So let's talk about this. We just watched uh, Pet Cemetery. Had you ever seen this movie before? I had seen it a long-ass time ago, and it turns out I remembered pretty much nothing from it. Yeah, uh, the last time, I it was ages since I saw this, and I had a fondness for this movie at one point. Yeah, I remember you liked it quite a bit. Uh, I wouldn't say quite a bit, but I had a fondness for it. It wasn't quite a bit, I'll tell you that. Uh, I was always rem uh, remiss about it excluding certain things. But upon this viewing... I'm like, what the fuck happened here? But anyway, uh, let's get, so you kind of guess my thoughts oh, a yeah? bit. So uh, anyway, uh, what, what's your uh, takeaway from this movie? Well, again, we stress that I have currently reread the book. Again, I hadn't read the book in a long time, but it's always been a favorite. So, uh, and you haven't. So what's your take as just a plain viewer? I mean, just your standard audience guy. I didn't hate it, mm -hmm. like by a long shot. All right. But I have one massive problem with it. I already it. know what it is. Let's get to it right now. Like, immense. I already know what it is. Like, if, if this was fixed, I think it'd be all right. Uh-huh. I already know. I already know, baby. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, you can already tell that I, I'm not a fan of this uh, adaptation. But yeah, you're right. It's not a total loss. The thing is, as an adaptation, again, not a total loss. But it's imagine if you abridged an abridgment. Mm. that's what it is and the problem with with that is that the book's uh most unnerving disturbing and unsettling elements all are psychological events that happen to these people and mm. none of that stuff is addressed in the movie and i kind of understand why they would adapt it that way it's hard to adapt certain things to the screen mm -hmm. and a lot of the stuff in the book is hard to adapt uh so they focus more on the horror aspect which ironically is literally like the last, yeah. maybe like maybe a hundred pages of the book, which is that way in the movie too. Yeah. I would say. So it feels if you're watching an adaptation for an adaptation, it's incredibly rushed. It skips over all the character development that is important to the impact of the events, and uh, it kind of amps up the kind of horror trope approach of the horror elements. Now, I know for a fact that the studio wanted this. They said, this stuff is not horror enough. Horror it up. That was hard to say. Yeah. So they've made uh, Mary Lambert, the direct dress, uh, kind of ratchet up the horror st stuff. The irony of it is that the horror stuff in the book is 10,000 times more effective because of the psychological buildup. They also made her cut a lot of the character stuff from the beginning because this was a... a uh, they they felt it was a the movie was too long, so and I and I could see it Kinda in some is. of the stuff you know like uh, when the woman commits suicide, Missy Dandridge. Yeah. They're, they're, they they just never address it again, and they, they and the the way it was adapted, that was meant to replace a death in the book, and, and so they could address something, but they just don't. So a lot of that stuff is clearly missing. So I wonder what the full cut would be. But as it stands... I mean, I don't think it'll be much better. We'll get to that. As it stands, it's like an abridged version of an abridged version. It's the super cliffs notes of a book. Uh, Stephen King did the adaptation to this. So, what does that say? Was his uncut version of the adaptation good? Maybe, maybe not, because he also did the adaptation to The Shining, and that turned out to be shit. Yeah, true. And, uh, that would be the TV miniseries, but did, anyway. He did direct uh, Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, and he did direct Maximum Overdrive. Woo! So let's talk about uh, some elements first before we get into this, uh, into the the nitpicking, which I already know what it is. I know okay. you want to, to spill it out. But uh, as I, I said before, the book, it, it's one of his best fucking books. And rereading it uh, recently... It, it was 10 times more effective and it's so gut-wrenching it, it it fucking literally rips your guts out to read this book it's a hard read 
and not in the bad way. I mean, it's just intense. And it does this, it, it achieves this effect, not through horror, but through the taboo subject of, of the always looming specter of death. And uh, we as a society avoid the subject of death. You know, we even lie to ourselves. Ah, we're not sick. And, ah, uh, you know, death is something that we just shudder away. And the book constantly deals with this. You know, be it the the characters encountering it or the idea of it or having issues with it in their past. But the story is pretty straightforward. It's about a, a Midwestern family, a big city Midwestern family that moves to New England Uh and while they are there, they strike up a friendship with their neighbor who introduces them or actually introduces the head of the family to a pet cemetery that really is an adjunct to an ancient Mi'kmaq Indian burial ground, which bears some powers of, uh, I guess, creating fucking revenants, resuscitation, yeah, I guess, you know, but um. <clears throat> This lays the groundwork for what is to come in the book. But as I said, the bulk of the movie is the last third of the book. And all that buildup that's so intense and so gut-wrenching and fucking gut-ripping is not in the movie. So, But anyway, let's get to the intricacies of the fucking picture. Uh... Let's, get, let's start with this motherfucker. Cause you kind of know... have to say this because... It, it, it kind of breaks it. Yeah. Like, it's a big part. The biggest detriment to the movie is, without a fucking doubt, the acting. And... Specifically. Specif yes. Specifically the main actor. Yes. He uh, is horrible. I can't remember his name. Dane Natkiff or some shit like that. Nor should you. Yeah, he's... Whew. He is... You know, you know, like, if you want to see this guy's acting, just go up to a tree. Yeah, Because really. he is wood. He is the definition of a wooden actor. He is terrible. And the fucking thing is that the bro the entire and the entirety of the book centers on him. Yeah. And likewise with the, the movie. movie. And <sighs> there's I can't stress this enough that again, they gutted a lot of the the build up and the character development whether it was in script form or, or in the editing, I don't know, but the point is that that is all dependent on his reactions to stuff. Yeah. Other and the movie is like too. that. The movie is like that. There's yeah. like it's just him reacting to stuff. But he doesn't and, react. And there was a point in the movie where I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna ignore this guy's acting and just you have put, to, and just otherwise put my, you... and just put myself in that situation, which I think helped mm -hmm. with the movie quite a bit because this dude does not react to shit. Yeah, his kid dies and he's like, "No." You know what's weird? The the uh, the kind of like stoic nothingness the the blank stare and the non-reactions yeah the only time they 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 are ever affected in the book is after the death of gage his child um because he distances himself yeah with and it kind of but he's wooden so it's yeah, not that that he's the, doing it's just that he sucks i will say this i was gonna say this in case you disagreed with me about his acting which i don't think it was gonna happen because he's horrible uh, I was going to say that he does get a little better after that mm -hmm. because you can kind of like give him credit as like, oh, he's just grieving, right? Right. That being said, towards <laughs> to when once his kid comes back and he's kind of going crazy, he plays that horribly. Yep. So it just that like little excuse you give kind of falls apart at the end. Yeah, he works on absolutely no fucking level. No. And it drags the movie down yes. considerably. Now, here's the thing. Some of the other actors are decent to to fair, with mm -hmm. the exception of Fred Gwynn as Judd uh, as Judd, his neighbor, who is who is great. Yeah, I love great. this character. He's fantastic. He's he does great justice to what's in the book. And again, uh, he should have been in there more, per the book and per what was <laughs> what was given to us in the movie. You can focus on this guy because the book. Centers a lot around him too, and the friendship he strikes up with Lewis, the the main character, mm. and then really you only see him kind of at the beginning, a little bit in the middle, and then towards the end. So none of the impact of their friendship is felt. But then again, you go, man, with that other guy acting, it wouldn't have even felt like a friendship. It would have felt like some True. bullshit. That being said, he is probably the best part of this movie. I would say. Yeah, Fred Gwynn is he, definitely. He is there great. a lot through the movie. Um, he's there throughout the first like 
first and like half of the second act maybe he's there a lot but once he dies the movie feels different and it just kind of like you stop caring because this guy is the freaking um main character now like full on the main character it doesn't have you know him being his friend and being there and guiding him and showing him all this weird shit and talking to him about all the weird shit that's happened instead you just have this freaking plank being the, the main driving force and it just yep. kind of it just kind of falls apart that being said i did like him quite a bit um who uh herman monster <laughs> i liked him quite a bit i thought he was one of the better characters in this movie yeah he's he, he's fantastic he is he's he's the saving grace of this movie really uh the kids are adequate for kids yeah they're uh, it's pretty sad when the kids are better than they really than, are than him it's the sad part uh and the wife of the main character is not great which again, when you compare yeah. it to to this fucking guy, I mean, you're like, well, she's fucking Oscar winning. She's compared to that it's guy, Tasha Yar. So there yeah. you go. That's yeah. the quality of acting you're gonna get. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, like the the little characters you get in the town are are pretty good. Like Missy Dandridge, their their yeah. housemaid. You know, they all have that uh, New England affectation. They really went out of their way to to kind of give that feeling which is interesting again because like in any great stephen king book uh, a big part of the push behind the kind of evil in the background is that the town the town is kind of in league with it is kind of aware of it kind of like in stephen king's it or the mist and stuff like that people are kind of somewhat aware of it it's part of their burden and they don't touch on that at all no. in, the, in the in the movie uh but anyway yeah actor wise Fred Gwynn's the star of this fucking thing by default of not sucking complete balls. Yeah, I would and say he's, he's really good. Yeah, and, I would venture to say he's actually quite good. In yeah, and he does real good justice to the to the the character as portrayed in the book. I just wish they would have put him as much as he was in the book because as it is, it's very anemic. If you haven't read the book, he's there. But he really saves the fucking movie, so it, it really has an impact on you. But, you know, if you read the book, you're like, man, I really wish they would have put the motherfucker in there as much because he is so important to the story. Uh, much more important that he's given uh, the ability to be in the in the in the movie. But anyway, let's talk about the effects in this thing. Uh, I mean, there isn't many. There isn't many, but that's well, let's go ahead. What, what, what you think overall? There's a few gore effects mm. and, uh, you know. Not not great, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, the best one maybe is that uh, ghost guy. Mm -hmm. He looks all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's not that many. It's just, it's whatever. It's fine. I don't know if this was an issue of budget or or what. I I really don't know. Uh, I do know that in adapting this, they excluded the bulk of the effects from mm -hmm. from the script. Uh, and I say it has to be in the adaptation. Oh, because, there is one really bad one. Let me just throw that in there. Uh, it has to be in the adaptation because the those parts of the script are included in the movie and none of that is present. So let me address this because it's it's the biggest issue with this adaptation besides the shitty actor that is your main star. And that is that the film adaptation doesn't touch on what the micmac burial ground is all about yeah you get a little backstory but it's not even close to even being skeletal you know it's just like very barren very barely there and uh they just completely gloss over this you're just expected to understand that for some reason this bear i mean i guess ancient indian who's uh hoo-ha and that's the reason why people come back and uh they completely gloss over this the fact is that if you read the book it is a, a a haunting force it's an entity that you don't really ever see with a few exceptions and this is something i used to bemoan even when i you know was kind of fond of this this movie and it's that they completely exclude this and it's baffling to me i i'm fucking astounded and just re-seeing it now was like why would they exclude this i understand a non-visible entity is a hard thing to get across but there's a multitude of ways even when a constricted budget to get it across in some form or another uh long story short the entity driving the events is is a wendigo spirit it's it's a it's a beast of of mythical native american mythical lore 
You know, the spirit of the forest, demonic force, a cannibal spirit. And there's so much history that Judd tells the character, the main character, Lewis, in the book that would have been brilliant to show on screen. Even him just telling it to give you that heft. And what you are made to understand in the book is that all the events are manipulated. Even Gage getting run over are manipulated by the spirit. It influences because it wants a corporeal I mean, body. they do kind of touch on it. Trust me. They do not compare to what's in the book. It is fucking... There's nothing. They don't mention the spirit. They don't allude to it. When he goes uh, up to the Micmac burial ground, it's a fucking haunting experience in the, in the you know, kind of like horror sense, not in psychological sense. The second time that he goes with Gage, it's, it's the only time you get a glimpse of the Wendigo in some form. And they make you understand that they've stepped into something else like the realm that it inhabits may just be in fact rereading it now you know with all the Stephen King background that I have now in this stage of my life it's almost like he was making this place a, a, a thinning you know from from uh, like the mist and and uh, it and uh, so on you know uh, the Dark Tower series it's almost like it's a, it's a gate between worlds because Lewis looks up at the skies and the constellations aren't of Earth. And there's all these weird apparitions that come to him and laughing things. And he sees this gigantic form plod forward and it's, it's the physical form of the Wendigo. But, you know, you don't get any of that. And I'm okay with them not showing it physically. It's just that the influence is not ever felt really i mean as as impactful as it should be so it almost feels like lewis is just doing stuff for no fucking reason you do kind of get that feeling when yeah, he's like yeah i mean i would disagree i think there is a bit of that feeling in in there it's just this dude's so bad um but there there is some stuff like that like i mean they show that weird thing popping out that looked really bad yeah, that was um i don't even know what the fuck that i don't thing know what was that was supposed to be. to be but it was like a thing Stupid. and he's like oh okay cool that's a thing and then when he goes into the house and it looks all weird, there is like little stuff in there um, that kind of makes you wonder like what it is. But I mean, ultimately, you're just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, I see that ultimately as a f fucking problem where you're like, I mean, I guess it's a thing. You're, you're right. They, they touch on it. Like, yeah, uh, but you don't you, you never don't know. You don't know. So you're just kind of like, oh, I guess it's, a, it's like a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's OK to not know if it unsettles you. It I mean, it didn't unsettle me. I was just like, that's fucking lame. You know, I, did it unsettle you in any Not way? really. No, I would right? say that it was, it was like, I kind of want to know what this is. Because I, like, like going out, like, I haven't read the book. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume uh, they don't, th that's how it is in the book. It's kind of like a, like a death note type thing. You know what I, I right. assume this is that how it is in the right, book. Right, right. So for me, it doesn't have that big, a, that big of an impact, mm -hmm. especially because I assume that that's how it, you know, that's, that's why I assume it's how this way for a reason. And I thought it was more like vague for, for you to piece shit together. Yeah. And, and, and in that way, it kind of worked. Like in my head, I was like, Oh, this is what it is. This it's, it's kind of like an it thing, or it's kind of like a, 1122 type of thing you know whatever they're called i piece that together because i you know stephen king yeah and there's enough of that in there for, for me to piece that together so it kind of worked for me in that way but i would understand if you read the book and it's like completely yeah. shitty and uh and now i say this in like i said in terms yeah in terms of an adaptation it fucking falls fucking flat uh now seeing it plainly as a movie Again, it just feels anemic, like an like a like a fucking uh, a bridge version to the max, turned up to eleven. So it doesn't have the effectiveness it once had. I don't have a fondness for it anymore. But anyway, yeah. So uh, let's talk about the score in this thing, which I thought was pretty atrocious up until the end, where it was kind of fitting. Uh, but before, I won't say atrocious. It, it was just like. Bad. Yeah, this fucking sucks. This feels like a TV melodrama score. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was bad. It was one of those that you just kind of ignore. Yeah. At the end, it gets a little better, but uh, it's not by much, you know. So anyway. It's got that thing where it's really loud for some reason. It is at times, yes. Uh, and uh, I guess the final thing we can tackle is the uh, the visual aesthetics of this film. Um, how would you define these? Like very 
of the time, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's a late 80s movie, 1989. It doesn't, I don't think it looks horrible. It, do, it doesn't really show its, its 80s-ness too much. Yeah. So that's good. Um, eh, it looks like a movie. I think uh, one of the things that, that could have really helped this movie is if they made it feel like it was where it was. You know, they actually filmed this in Maine, as evidenced by the lobster neon sign, yeah. I guess. I guess that's that was supposed to communicate. But uh, anyway, uh, they should have really made it feel like it was in Maine. And, and you know, because it gives it a, yeah. a, a more rustic feeling. And uh, eh, the only time I really ever got that was from... From Judd, uh, Fred Gwynn's character. Yeah. Because uh, he's that good. The problem is that, like, look, I don't think they ever say why they're there, do they? Uh, he like got a, a movie? Yeah, at the beginning they make a passing reference to him getting a job at the university. All right, well, I that's didn't it. even, that's how, like, whatever this was. Yeah. That was, I don't even remember why he's there. So you're just kind of following this little family who is in this, in this town, but there is, you, like, you don't see any of the town. Yeah. So you're just like, oh, I guess this is this family. Other than it kind of character, it kind of happens that way in the book because they are a distance from the main town. But you get again, again, man, going back to this, it really fucking bugs me. <laughs> again, you get all the town stuff from Judd and his and his stories, which you so, do get a little. But it's trust, not... like I said, trust me, it's not even. And even that, they kind of they kind of toyed with. Again, I'm okay with changing stuff and stuff. It, it, it leads somewhere. For example, in the book, Judd has a wife. And her death is a big part of how these characters react to death. And uh, here they just don't give him a wife. They shift that death to the death of the Missy Dandridge character who hangs yeah. herself. But they don't ever address it again. Which you're like, okay, well then nobody yeah, really that, dealt with that. That was confusing. Like yeah. as someone who doesn't know anything about the book, that was confusing. And here's another thing they kind of dropped the ball on. Uh, and again, this might have to do with Tasha Yar's acting and her her fucking shitty ass main character husband, uh, uh, his acting, um, and it's that her background with her sister, they show it and it's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, mean, I thought that. You know what? Yeah, that was pretty effective. Yeah. Like that little scene that they show, there's like a flashback. Mm -hmm. That was actually kind of kind of creepy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, but again her acting skill doesn't ever grant her the ability to emote how much this affected her and yeah. then earlier in the in the movie when her husband is telling their young uh, i'm sorry their their girl El ellen or ellie he's telling her about death in the book she's profoundly disturbed by him telling her this and you see that they obviously cut that out because all of a sudden they're kind of like mad at each other, but they don't ever really yeah, address why. Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah. Yeah. In the book, they do address why. I was it's actually a... th that bit in the movie. I was actually gonna ask, like, wait a minute, what happened here? Yeah, that's a big part of the book. It's humongous part of the book because it drives her character and her relationship with her husband. Again, the book is about death. That's why it's so disturbing. It's not about the monsters and the Wendigo. That's disturbing in a horror way. It's super disturbing. Because it f confronts death face first. And none of that stuff is in there. So that entire scene is like, why would they cut that out? Yeah. I mean, I, again, you can blame that on the studio. Because apparently they did make them cut that shit out. But I don't know if she would have really emoted that well. Or, you know, whatever. But the point I mean, is... Him. The point is that scene with her... With her, the flashback with her sister was effective. And just imagine how much more effective it would have been with all that background... And the fight that they had, they should have had, but they didn't on screen. And, you know, there's a reason all these characters should have been affected by death. And they're just kind of not. And then when their baby boy dies, this fucking wooden piece of shit yeah. sucks at emoting. Man, he sucks. He was bad. He, but, was, um, he, was, he, was, he was the worst part of the movie. Um, I didn't hate it, though, if I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't read the book, obviously. So I'm going at it as, like, you know, kind of. I haven't read the book. This is just a movie. Uh, I was confused at several moments. Like mm -hmm. like that scene, I was like, wait, what? Am I missing something? But then it kind of, you know, I kind of like forgave it because later they explained her with the sister. So I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, uh, the, the the death of that, of that, uh, that neighbor was really confusing to me. But I was like, okay, death. And then it kind of affected... Tasha Yar a little bit so I was like okay I guess that's why when I yeah. was there 
Um, so there's a lot of stuff where it's like, as the movie progresses, you're like, okay, I, I guess that kind of makes some sense. Which and, and it helped, for me, it helped a lot to put myself into his shoes and not rely on his horrible acting. Yeah. Um, so I got, I, I didn't hate the movie, but there, yeah, there was, there was, oh, I will say this. I thoroughly disliked the last half. Um, when the baby comes back and he like goes full slasher, mm -hmm. I thought that was corny as hell. And, and, and I could have done with all of that. Again, all that. again, in terms of the adaptation, that stuff makes sense. You know, he doesn't just fucking start killing indiscriminately for no yeah, reason. Yeah, I assumed as much. Yeah. And, and again, this ties to the Wendigo spirit. It's driven by a need. Yeah. And I will say this. I did get that impression that there is some sort of like demon. Um, because of how quickly they go into killing stuff, uh, killing people, and you know they seem to be driven by something. So I did kind of get that there was like a demon the s aspect to it, but they never tell you, so that's something yeah. you just kind of have to assume. So it just comes off as. Uh, and, and yeah, when the baby comes back, it just comes off as corny. Yeah. Because there's this little freaking kid running around with a little scalpel, slicing people's like ankles and shit. And the, yeah, and the thing is, in the in the book, that scene is uh, super effective, you know, because it's built up. Like I said, that that. That last chunk of the fucking movie is literally like, maybe like the last fifty or so pages. So which you know that gives you an idea how much they they fucking trimmed this motherfucker down. But um, yeah, it actually is very effective in the book, and it's unsettling because, God, because Lewis actually reacts yeah uh, viscerally to his son. You know, it, it's kind of like a realization of holy shit, I've been manipulated by this entity. It's, it's you know, and then when he finally kills the kid. He's still driven by it to bring his wife back. Yeah. And that also I felt was not very well. And this, yeah, you know, and this it kind of seemed more like, oh, he, he, he's he's kind of gone crazy. And yeah. they kind of give it a little bit like the, the weird one-liner he spotted out when he killed the cat. Yeah. It was like, stay down, lay down, stay dead. Yeah. That and was... I was like, oh, man, that was okay. It was, and then uh... he does another one later on. And then uh, he's still, like doing this weird like little laugh occasionally, and that's when I was when he did the laugh, I was like, oh no, that's what he's supposed to be acting. He's supposed to be acting like he's crazy at this point or whatever, or or like you said, being driven by something. But you don't get it because he's horrible at acting. So that was really confusing. Yeah. Um, when he does go back up there, I was like, oh, you know what? Okay, that's a little bit effective. Like this dude's like, I like how he was like, you know, I waited too long. That could have been cool if it was played well. But he's just like, I waited too long. I must go up there now. She barely died. And it's just because of his horrible portrayal. Yeah. If he, and then that could have been like a little effective little scene. But uh, this guy destroyed the movie. Yeah. He, he's bad. As it is, the movie could have been at least a fairly decent, abridged version of the book. But as it stands, the, this fucking guy oh, right God, here. God. So anyway, let's give it a final fucking rating uh, on a scale of 1 through 10. This uh, one's hard. You give this one's hard because I actually kind of enjoyed some of it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Herman was really good. Yeah. Um. And and I thought that back that that uh, flashback was really good. Uh, some of the imagery was kind of cool. Um. Like especially like when when they're in the uh, in the burial ground and it has that weird like overhead shot. Oh, I thought yeah, that yeah. was kind of cool. Um. And it again, it helps a lot if you put yourself in the situation and just ignore the horrible acting. And it helps a lot if you have an open mind and try to piece things together as you go along. But if you've read the book, I assume it sucks ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I didn't hate it. I enjoyed some of it, but I can't. This guy killed it for me. I have to give it like a four. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, in the same boat. Uh, as an adaptation, I give this thing like a, a fucking one. You know, and that one goes to 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 Fred Gwynn as Judd. Uh, wish there would have been more of him. Uh, again, it glosses over all the important things, all of the fucking truly terrifying things, and that's the psychological effect of death on people. Just let's forget about that. So that sucks. Um, but yeah, that one is for for old Judd. Uh, he was fantastic, and the, the saving grace ultimately. As a standalone movie, just watching it without any attachment to the book, um, yeah, I'd probably be in the same boat, somewhere between a three and a four. So I guess three point five. Yeah. Uh, if this guy was because, different, 
Yeah. It could have been a much better... Because there are little moments that give you, you know... Yeah. Some hope that there was something there. And I would be very interested in seeing a full director's cut of this. Because it's obvious they excised it. And, I mean, it's been admitted by the studio and the director that that did happen. So I'd be interested to see... Although it would mean more, yeah, that's, uh, more that's of the that pro- fucking idiot. Honestly, I don't blame the studio on this one because th- this guy was probably like, "Oh man, this is not working." Yeah. Cut this baby. So anyway, that's our thoughts on Pet Cemetery. Uh, I'll tell you, go read the book because it's one of his fucking best. Uh, you know, we we gotta declare it. Is this a hit or a shit? This is fucking shit. Not the book. The, the movie's fucking shit. Uh, this it, is it's this not is... good. I don't want to say it's full shit. This is like a turd. This is like a, like for you, it's like a rabbit turd. Yeah. It's, still, I, it's not that bad, but it's still a turd. I'm so, I'm so annoyed. With, and, and, and for a different reason, I I know we're going to end it, but I have to throw this one in there. Um, You're annoyed because it's not a good adaptation of the book. I'm annoyed because I almost really liked it. Like there's yeah. some stuff in there that kind of worked. And ultimately this guy kills it. And it's it's not very good. Let me it's a rabbit that. turd. Let me add to that in, in terms that, as an adaptation, yes, supremely annoyed that they fucking glossed over everything that was good. Uh, but they still could have had a chance to do something different. If they couldn't portray the idea of a non-visible entity manipulating things, or if they couldn't get into the psychological aspects because that guy's acting was shit, yeah. then they could have done something different to get the same effect. And they didn't. Instead, they just did the bridge version. And I, I mean, I could just turn you to people like Clive Barker who they don't feel like just rewriting the same thing again. So they'll change things, but it'll still have the same effect. Yeah. They didn't do that here. And he had the opportunity to do it. And maybe, again, maybe that director's cut is different. But again, that fucking actor sucks my ass. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a loss on both ends. But anyway, that's been our thoughts on Pet Cemetery. Read the fucking book. It's fantastic. And unexpected Stephen King shit. I will say this, I will say this, there is a new adaptation coming out, and it's from the people that directed Starry Eyes, which has been uh, uh, lauded and applauded. It was originally going to be from the people that brought you the new Stephen King's It. That mm-hmm. would have been interesting too, but uh, I got the script, so I'm going to read that, see what's up. We will be exploring Pet Cemetery 2. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's see how that goes. I believe uh, it's that's, the same director. Uh, I don't remember. I, I think it is. Uh, maybe. But uh, either way, we'll be exploring it. And it is interesting to note that that was a fucking box office critical failure. Yeah. But it's gotten a cult as of late. So let's see what, what happens. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's not. I mean, as, as long as it doesn't have that guy. Hey, yeah. Uh, but anyway, let us know what you think. Are we right or wrong? Do we suck on the schlong? Most likely. Hit like, share, subscribe. And we're out. Is that our sign off? It's now.